It's a beautiful Wednesday morning, reaching you from the nation's capital, Abuja. Welcome to Outnumbered on Owelike TV. Of course, I'm not alone. Good morning, Chris, and good morning, Ramsey. How are you guys? I am here to pay back <laughs> the sin you have been committing against my brother, Ramsey. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. Been okay, it looks like I'm being outnumbered been today out properly, yes. properly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is why you and Antonia have been They've in the been same out, out this morning. <laughs> they will come and they will talk, I inflicted talk, talk. you guys so that people will have it. In fact, I don't even know oh, why. Oh, well, let, let me not say what's on my mind. But say because there's a lot going on right now in the say economy it. of Nigeria. Say Let's not add this one to the problem we have. We have, as, we have decided to have at number at number you today. Well, yeah, well, so well. Number yeah. Antonia again. I would just soon. say, blessed am I amongst men this uh, morning. Don't be, <laughs> don't be happy to be by my side. <laughs> 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 All right, our viewers at home, uh, we'll be starting out number. You know how we do it. We will be reviewing the newspaper headlines and then after right then we'll go out on a short break and when we come back we'll be taking our lead story. But today, before we go into that, let's start with the Punch newspaper proper. Federal government rights governors as agency predicts flooding in 31 states, 31 out of 36 states, excluding the FCT. Federal government agency lists local governments in Akwa Ibom, Lagos, Adamawa, Ogun, Benue, 26 others. As high flood risk areas, uh, Benue demolishes riverside buildings. Way to go. Uh, Lagos directs residents to relocate. Sokoto, Edo, others begin campaigns. Love it. Uh, now that's on the pond page two. Uh, now to the next story. NDLA destroys 304,000. 436 kilogram of illicit drugs in Lagos. And that story it is on pages 4 and 5 of the Punch newspaper. PDP and WC submit reports on WK as neck meets on Thursday. Now that story is equally found on page 26 of, uh, I beg your pardon, page 29 of the Punch newspaper. Now, blood on Chidima's dress marks Ataga's DNA export and that's on page four to read more on that story as uc it's denies harboring yoruba nation agitators and that's a page 12 read now let's take three more stories from the punch 30 billion dollars lost that's a kick out that story the writer says federal government may revoke unused oil well licenses well I think that's that is the proper way to go if you ask me. And that's a pay twenty one because why would you have the license and you're not using it? What is it there for? Is it for fashion? Are you yeah, just so keeping many it of in them, your so house? Many of them are not actually using it. Using it. A lot of them. They only yeah, keep, they, it they keep it there to, to for use contracts. it to beg for contracts or use it use it use it as, as, collateral, as collateral to get loan from banks or other businesses. Meanwhile, we cannot have access to it to get. Could, I say that is, could it be said that that's part of the problem we have with um, our oil revenue in Nigeria? Because apart from the fact that all these people, they attack uh, the pipelines and, of course, the vandalism and all of that, if you own a, um, um, a well license and then you're not using it, what is the purpose? You don't even need to be given it, a license now, if you know you're not going to use there it. There are regulations to all this. Mm -hmm. The question now is that, is the government enforcing this, those reg regulations? It is not for the owners of the license or licenses mm -hmm. to tell the to regulate the government so if the agreement is that okay we are giving you this for so so, so time and then we are going to renew it for you at so, so, so. And remember uh, remember during Buhari's uh, regime he revo revoked some licenses okay. uh, only few like Tiwa Danjuma and the likes of them that still have the license but if they are not using it the law should take its place all right, that's a nice one. Now let's move to the next story, which is 27 states failed to access 54.9 billion naira UBEC fund. And that is on page 12. And the final story for now, marketers excited as Dangote lowers diesel to 1,000 naira per liter. I take that story again. Marketers excited as Dangote lowers diesel to 1,000 naira per liter. Uh, that's a page 21. But then my question is, is that the best we can do? Well, that's not the best. I think uh, I'm, I'm foreseeing it going lower than, lower than that. So they're uh, starting marketers with are happy. Okay. What about consumers? consumers? I don't even know why consumers why should all, be happy. Too. All the okay. media media houses houses are saying Dangote refinery crashes diesel price to one thousand naira. It is not its making. Mm. This is not the making of Dangote. But we have to give it, give no, it up to him know, because I, actually he yeah, could have it, decided it, to say I'm selling it for no, 2000 it, It's a private refinery. It, it's not a government refinery. It boils down to what we are talking about, the, regula the regulatory uh, agency mm -hmm. of government. This is, okay, now Naira is gaining strength. Dollar, dollar is crashing. Go to the market here. The prices of commodities is still the way it yes, is. Yes, exactly. So we need agencies that will regulate such things. 
Naira is gaining strength, dollar, dollar is going down. That is what influences this decision by Dangote. And not because he just, maybe because he, uh, he wants to be the, the number one uh, richest man in Africa. He wants to give it back to the country. He, he can't, he's not losing. Because but he, then, mm -hmm. was he still supposed to give it to Dangote? Because what the federal government couldn't do in years, he came up and just No, did but it. his government How policy... How many refineries is, no, do we have in Nigeria that is it's not working? He's got all this refinery his government, the price. But this, at, the same time, the, at the same time, the Nigerian government has also told him that he's free to, to buy crude by, with Naira, not Naira, with dollars. Not with dollars. How about that? That so he doesn't need to go and now start buying dollars to go and buy crude. Do you know that there will be a ripple effect the way, they, they gave are selling him... to him in dollars? No, but uh, do you know but that? But of course, the federal government cannot sell crude to someone that is refining in Nigeria in dollars. In dollars. That is not the legal that, tender. It's not the legal exactly, tender. But so it shouldn't even be a subject, be a subject of discussion. Of, no, yeah, no, no. no you are getting it wrong. Okay. You are getting it wrong. Are we buying... Have you been using dollars to buy things in Nigeria here? Yes. Yes or no? Some persons have. So what, so what even brought the discussion before we are even discussing hey, it here? What brought, what brought the idea of, be, yeah. of, the what brought the of, idea of, of buying, of with, buying with Naira instead of buying with dollar? dollar? That is because it is practicable. They are practicing it here. Now they felt, okay, since Naira is... And it's going to also crash dollar more because if he is going to buy with dollars, he's going to source for the, dollar, for the dollar and then to pay the federal government or pay wherever he's buying from and then that will make dollar appreciate. to appreciate. Mm, appreciate. So government policy is what is affecting this, and not just because Dangote is is a uh, okay okay is right. being uh, generous. Generous. No, but right. again, like you said, mm -hmm. if you had decided to uh, keep it at one one thousand five hundred, maybe the, the people who are supposed to checkmate him will also be sleeping. Be sleeping mm -hmm. well. Because okay. This is a monopoly. This is a monopoly, yeah. of course. Okay, but okay. then we're looking up to getting more refineries in Nigeria. That is the size of uh, the Punch newspaper for this morning. Over to Chris. All right, from the nation's newspaper this morning, IMF projects inflation decline to 23%, 18% in 2025 and 2026, respectively. Oh, I can't wait to see that day. That story you will find on page 7 of the nation's new newspaper. Again, Dangote's story. Dangote refinery crashes diesel to 1,000 per liter. Wow, I think uh, owners of industries should be happy now. How Tinibu is getting security, economy right by Omokuri. Mm -hmm. I think Omokuri is beginning to mm -hmm. fall in love with uh, Tinibu. Oh, please. Uh, so are, are we not looking at every of them moving from one, from one party to, to another? See, what's the likes of Daniel Bwala. Bwala, Omokuri. You know, Omokuri came to Nigeria after, shortly after Tinibu so, was sworn was in. Sworn and in. Then he, he but was look received. at the way they were actively criticizing this same administration during the elections. So is it is it is it actually a case of oh I just move with the crowd I follow the crowd I do not because if it feels like if you ask me some of our politicians do not have what they call integrity. Is this we, we said it today moral <laughs> not, integrity not, we said it during because, the review. I mean, you you actually you can go outright, watch the review if, and if see what you, we're talking if about. If you watch these people during elections, I mean some persons are interviewed and then you still see them. I I think interviewed one person on, on politics and policies a few few weeks back and then I saw the person literally. Criticized the Bola Tinubu's administration all right and well. Then by the time he came on board, I'm not saying um, APC is bad or APC is good, but for you to actually criticize a particular party or a particular administration, that means you shouldn't be ready to come on board with that said ad administration, right? What these people are doing, they're only fighting uh, for it, their it, daily bread. It, you know, in Bola's language, they are not, they are not the era of politics. politicking is, o is, o is over. Now he is out now to support the government of the day. Of oh, the day. Uh, I know what that means. For one quote that uh, is I know, know he's a lawyer, so he can, he can, he can, he can play, play his, ways, uh, his way with well, Whatever yes. rocks their boat so far, they are actually um, helping Nigerians. That's that's the all purpose. right. Moving on, EFCC arranged Kubana chief priest for Naira abuse, like Bobby Risky. Like, you know, speaking Kubana. about that, I just saw a tweet from uh, Portable, you know, the popular guy. Yeah, yeah. I just saw a tweet for him. He said, After God, now government, uh, after God, he said, please government, forgive you. me if you have videos of me spraying money. Mm. No more spraying of money. Portable pleads with EFCC. Do you know it's <laughs> simply because the reason why Obi could. Uh, I say Ubi Kubana. Uh, no, uh, Kubana, Kubana Chief is being arraigned. It's not even a recent occasion. No, one of it is recent. I think one of it is around January. Uh, yeah, like recent, not as recent, recent as, as that of uh, uh, Bob, Bob Risky. Bob Risky's own was like a week 
after. Yeah, after. But this one, maybe general. I think what they are trying to do is just um to pick some pressing so it could serve as a detail. No, you know, again, where portable is used to that. Recently, about a month or two ago, he did that. That is why he's saying, it, ah, for them to call, does offer. yeah, for them to call Kubana Chief, don't be surprised that they will be call the me. next person in uh, the hook uh, of And he's, he's now saying that uh, Bob Risky is a man who they should not jail him, in, uh, put him in the mm. same cell with Bob Risky. Uh, let me know, compare. <laughs> All right, moving on. First ladies, RHI empowers 120 Southwest women farmers with 60 million naira. You are from the Southwest. What are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> what are we waiting for? Uh, do you know if she has gotten her share? Ah, uh, no wonder. She it's possible. Ha- maybe that, that is why she is having Qatar. Oh God! They, too, really? much, too, too much, much money. money yeah. Too much the money. Is much for, money is for, money is for those, you know? with, uh, those who sleep under the AC. No, please. Yes. <laughs> All right. Kudos to the first lady. I think uh, the wife of the president actually she is surprising me every day. You know when they say something I like about her, is she's mm. a silent worker. She's not. Yeah. She's not making like, noise. She's not making noise. She's, she's not just making moving. noise. No, yeah. You see, when the president came aboard, they were eating the ground running. Yes. She isn't eating the ground running. She's just doing her she's thing. She's doing her thing. Yeah, you see. No, you know when we, I mean, when they do things that are bad, we actually are trying to come yes. out and condemn but them. Do the but then when things. they do the good thing, let's let's say what it is. She just comes. People are feeling her impact from one state to another. That's why she's supposed She's not making noise. No, no. You're not what expecting, you know, for some. Anyway, what do you, ex- what do you expect? Trumpet. Eight years first lady, three term senator. Senator. Now first lady. No, she's, she's, she's got the experience. Yeah. So the experience yeah, yeah, yeah. Is she's there. got the experience. Remember when, when Dino, to Dino attacked her that he was going to, uh, when Dino was still in the National, National Assembly, Assembly. Said he was going to impregnate her. One would have thought that with the with the influence and affluence of her husband, she was going to do give with it her. But she was just calm. She, she's, and I'm sure she's today, a woman of God. Talking about anyway, being graceful. She, mm, yeah, anyway, she's, she's a pastor got with grace, the yeah? Re- she's yeah. got grace. Yeah. All right, moving on. Student loan scheme set for take off with 1.2 million beneficiaries. Go ahead, uh, continue, that, continue. That, that should be continue. my state. Don't don't shock okay, let's that should move. be for my state. And that will be the size of the nation. <laughs> the, nation be, the nation's <laughs> newspaper be. this morning. Because this one will take us to another... <laughs> <Let it be> <laughs> <because> <laughs> <laughs> Every month we hear about the student loan. And they come out it's with always starting. No, my, my question now is the 1.2. How many students do we have? Yeah, that could be for just Kogi State. Yes, it's, uh, yeah, I wrote to the president that you start from Kogi State. Yeah. All See, right. You guys this morning, eh? <laughs> well, let me take us to Vanguard newspaper. Over to you. All right. <laughs> okay, from the Vanguard newspaper this morning, uh, we have some stories making rounds, and I'm going to be taking just a few out of it. Uh, VP Shatima, Governor Bago, Ayo Terima, orders to grace economic summit. Well, it's not all about gracing economic summit, but then what are you doing with our own economy? All right. More still coming from the Vanguard newspaper this morning. Okwama Ewu families, chiefs demand detained monarchs whereabouts. Details on page five of the Vanguard newspaper. PDP neck, Atiku Wike's loyalist in battle for parties control. I don't know what's happening in the various parties, but then uh, the oppositions are not strong the way they ought to be anymore. Details on page eight of the Vanguard newspaper. Then the big story from the Vanguard says that. A food inflation slowing federal government's revenue rises. Hmm? Food inflation slowing federal government's revenue rises. That's coming from Edum. Uh, then I have just uh, two riders to that story. The first rider says uh, a targets more foreign investment inflow. Right? Mm-hmm. It targets more foreign investment inflow. Then the second rider says IMF raises. Uh, forecast for Nigeria's economic growth to 3.3%. And details of that can get on page 19. When you talk about food inflation, I don't know. But then if there's anything Nigerians need right now is food. If there is food inflation, then uh, it means it's going to affect the economy in a big way. All right, uh, fresh headers attack. That's the key card. Then uh, the story says that 26 security personnel Mourners, others killed in Benue State. Uh, Benue State is one state that doesn't have much. Okay, Benue State. Uh, they said they are the food basket of the nation. But then I can't the remember the last basket. time. Yeah. The, the last time they have the opportunity to go to the farms. You go to Agatu. You go to Zakibian, where yams come from, where all these fruits come from. They no longer go to the farm like 
uh, Chris will always say, sometimes you need to pay some money to these people, these people so you can, can access, access your, farm. your farm. I don't know what the government is doing about that. I think the government... And I feel like that's partly uh, why we have a uh, food inflation in Nigeria, because Nigeria. whether we like it or not, people always feel like, or maybe the bulk of whatever we consume in Nigeria is actually being imported. But most times, uh, like I'd always say, most of our foods actually come from these farmers or herders. And then, of course, they um, go to the farm, they are vet some, they sell some they keep some for their family but the little little quarter you know what they say about um a drop of water makes an ocean that little contribution they are pushing back into the society they are selling i mean for someone like me i have people um that i beg from ben Wednesday to get yam for me because yeah, their sure. yam is actually one of the best in nigeria best if not cheaper, the, best the best and cheaper, and cheaper. so now in, in this case now that they do not have access to their farm they can barely feed their family that means they even have to purchase and then how do they make ends meet at the end of the and day? That is, that is why, for whatever, for me, whatever achievement, economic mm -hmm. achievement this government is uh, enjoying now, mm -hmm. for me, it's, uh, it's just a make-believe because it is not in debt. in debt. The reason is because we are not responsible for the for what we are consuming up to about like 60 percent i remember those days just like you setting an example of you buying um yam from benue mm -hmm. i used to buy uh yam and uh, local chicken from benue okay. my former colleague or china used to supply them for me from benue state and then uh all of that now we can't have it you can't have it to anymore export them to nyanya park i will just drive in collect them now i can't mean? have them again it means transporters and farmers will have to struggle with the little they have from Benue to Benway. abuja and then by the time they inject the cost of fuel whatever well, it is everything. everything comes now to the consumer consumers, yeah. and then at the end what do you have so most of our food is being imported, imported right now yeah. that's why they talked about importing yeah, grains importing. from russia <laughs> recently and i was saying well by russia, the way like, it, it seems that that didn't see the light of the day i don't think so all right finally from the vanguard newspaper this morning kano anti-graft agency files fresh charges against Ganduje. Today is 17th. Ganduje will be in court today. Mm -hmm. uh, details of that you can get on page 20 of the Vanguard newspaper. That's going to be the size of the headlines from the Vanguard newspaper. Let's, let me hand you <laughs> over to Mercy now. Okay, now I would have expected that every of the paper this morning would have uh, this Ganduje's court case uh, plastered everywhere. But it looks like it's just one newspaper that is talking about it, given that even his ward had actually suspended him from their party. From their party. But then, away from that, let's move to the Guardian newspaper this morning uh biometrics and sim registration deadlock that's the biggest story there for the guardian biometrics and sim registration deadlock and then we have endless enrollment gops 57 billion naira in 13 years amid complaints protests one would expect that if i'm spending so much i should be getting at least a good or positive feedback from whatever I'm spending so much yes, into. Now, times. 57 billion naira. It was just two days ago I saw someone say they just actually created a website for people to actually outrightly fix every um every mistake they made from those people that did their NIMSI cards then. Now, SIM registration, we're talking about that, 57 billion naira. Do you know how many complaints we have from uh, linking your NIMSI to your SIM card? Hmm. Because first of all, some persons, their name are, don't even tally with whatever is on their name. Say, say for instance, I'm Mercy, and they spelt it as Mercy. Mm -hmm. it, it's common. It, it, it goes down to also affect your bank account. Your bank, your bank account. account. Mm -hmm. Now, they are saying they spent 57 billion naira, which is actually not still reflecting. Because if, if you ask me, maybe they need to do better. But you know how this system works. If somebody tells you he spent that kind of money, at least your mind, your your heart of heart should tell you what, what has no, actually happened. happened. Well, I do not want to assume in this case. Let them out to come out and tell they us should tell us what's happening. Has been spent. <laughs> uh, well, that's a page six read for the Guardian newspaper this morning. Now, let's move to the next story. I said something about this story yesterday. Lagos court sentences Carpenter to live jail over defilement of Prem 6 pupil. Uh -uh. Remember what I said yesterday? Yeah, it I felt remember. like I was an extremist, but then this is actually extreme. Well, Metro page 8, that is where you find that for The Guardian. I don't want us to rest on that um, too much. Um, operators consider tariff hike to hedge rising OPEX. Uh, that is uh, tech page 20, read for The Guardian. Now, Reps Quackers gives Tinubu ultimatum to end insecurity, and that's on news page 3. I'm wondering what they mean by Reps Quackers there, because whether we like it or not, if insecurity is fixed in Nigeria, every other thing, Starts working smoothly, but then that's a newspaper three of the Guardian. 
And now to PDP matter, PDP governors Atiku Wike camps intensify positions at make or my neck. Mm-hmm. Emphasis on make or my ma. neck. Well, that's the news <laughs> page six. I would have loved to I'm enjoying about the that. drama going exactly. on right now in the political parties. <laughs> well, again, OBI highlights and sensitive on the serving allocations in 2024 budget. To read more on that, it's a news page three of The Guardian. And now to NCAA issues three day automatum for review of private aircraft operators' licenses. If you ask me, we have too many private jets in Nigeria. And the licenses, one would wonder, how did they get them? That's another story for another day. That's in business page 15. Parking of, space. Yes, the parking space, the Guardian. Security operatives uncover hideout of Yoruba nation agitators in a bad dawn. That's a nice move from our security operatives. And that's a new page 7 of the Guardian. Well, this is where we wrap it up for now. After the break, we'll be talking about the lead story from the Punch newspaper. Stay tuned. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back. You're still on Outnumbered, reaching you from Oilike TV. Now, the news headline for the Punch newspaper says, Federal government rights governors as agency predicts flooding in 31 states. Now, I've said I'm going to be seeing our government in positive light, not the negative side, because, I mean, it takes a uh, good government for them to actually say, let's plan, prepare before this thing actually starts proper. Um, not thinking about what happened last year. There were lots of flooding cases we had in Nigeria. But then 31 states, that is a lot. Mm-hmm. How would they control that? Over to you, Rati. Yes, at 31 states. I think um, the good thing is that um, they are rising to the occasion mm-hmm. before it happens. Before it happens yeah. uh, you, if you could remember, there was one time I said on Outnumbered here that um, sometimes uh, people give reports concerning this flood and nothing has been done you until the people are being swept away. Mm-hmm. But now I think um, going ahead to bring out this report and the federal government is writing to governors Mm -hmm. who are the number one chief security of the states states, to at least rise to the occasion and agencies it's a good one for me Mm -hmm. but then 31 states all right that is big instead of us waiting until this thing happens Mm -hmm. before we say okay nima take the material to this place Mm -hmm. and do this and do that it will be bad but then this is Nigeria. Anything happens. Some of these things that happen, some persons uh, tend to get one or two naira yeah, out, of, out it. of it. So some wish it happens. But then I think we're talking about lives and properties, properties here. Yeah. It will be good, okay, if all hands are on deck and everything necessary is being done before this flood comes. We're about to get into uh, the raining season. So mm-hmm. everything. The re- look at what they are doing in Benue State. Mm-hmm. Okay. Benue demolition riverside mm-hmm. buildings. Yes. I have a sister that lives very close to uh, River, River Benue, one part of River Benue. Okay. During the flooding, in fact, they have to evacuate the building. People living around that place, um, the, that BSU, mm-hmm. um, College of Health Science, yeah, and all, yeah. very close to the river bank. Mm-hmm. So during this flooding, uh, a lot happens. And they said, well, this dam, they open it all the time. I don't know if they are going to open it this time. But then it's a good one for the federal government to be sending uh, this warning to this governors warning. and agencies okay. after time. Okay, all right. Um, You've heard from Ramsey. I would first ask, do you agree with him? And then my second question would be, now Lagos directs residents to relocate. Is there anything the government should actually be doing? I mean, it feels like every year when the, um, it's getting close to the raining season, it's becoming a, a, a something that reoccurs over and over again. Should the government, apart from NEMA, of course, those ones that provide relief materials, but apart from relief materials, most of these people, they need where to stay. Of course, they can't uh, sure, move from wherever sure. they are to under the bridge. Can be displaced in our country. This place and everything. So now, do you think uh, they should actually move forward? And apart from NEMA relief and everything, the government should actually do better or provide more. When NEMA comes in, mm-hmm. it becomes a reactional move. Okay. Because by NEMA coming, NEMA is the national. That means it has happened. It has happened. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Uh, they are coming to now maybe uh, give a helping hand helping by providing so called mm-hmm. shelter, food, and all that. But we are talking about, uh, I think this week. Is it this week on this particular program you were talking about proactiveness? Yes, yes. Good and fine. This is now 
what we are calling the government to do to be proactive, proactive and that before is it happens. before it happens. Yes, that's correct. Now, uh, Ramsey has rightly uh, given, a, what is it called, stated the problems. Mm -hmm. Now, I am try going to go straight by giving, uh, what is it called, solutions to the problem. What are the solutions? Now, there are, there are some blessings that come in disguise. What are you to do instead of now, instead of money to be a mark to Nema or the money that has been given to Nema to prepare for this? Mm -hmm. I think they should use it to also work on the channels, the gutters, right. the gutters, the runways, and then the, the runways, dams. The dams. F first of all, why not go and what do you call uh, clear or clean the dams? That is one to mm -hmm. work on the gutters, the ways, w work on them so that it can. It's blockage that is causing some of those things mm -hmm. at times. Yes, the, the 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 current may be high, but once there is a a, a clean or a clear way for for the water to pass, mm -hmm. you will discover that though it will uh, it will happen, but with with little uh, it can be minimized. Uh, uh, what little uh, effect, the negative effect. Now, you can also use use this as a as a way of also engaging young people, young people. Who, who who are out of jobs or mm -hmm. who, who are looking for job. Call them. It's not every day you now start calling uh, Julius Beja to come and construct something for you. Get one or two experts that are into construction. Get direct labor. Widen the ways. Channel it. Get a uh, good uh, concrete, and then that that channel it down to the to the next uh, uh, what's it called point of uh, whatever mm -hmm. you can call it. So, government, all state gov governors need to be proactive in this case. Yesterday I said. The federal government gives a lot of allocation now to the governors. Mm -hmm. People should now start asking the governors what are they doing with mm -hmm. those monies. Okay. That is my case. All right. Thank you very much, Chris, and thank you very much, Ramsey, for doing perfect justice to that topic. But then I would like to deviate a bit uh, as we wrap up on that number today. You know something they say about ignorance of the law is not an excuse. So I like uh, maybe the EFCC should actually um, give out or make sure there is a sensitization as to um, Naira mutilation so that people would actually know that these things are actually absolutely wrong because some persons do not even know that what they are doing is wrong. But then we know that is not an excuse because, like I said, ignorance of the law is not an National excuse. National Orientation Agency National. is sleepy. <laughs> Do we <laughs> have them? Yes, we have. Well, it's, we it's have them. With the National, it's uh, Ministry of Information. Information. So now, whether we like it or not, it's our duty as journalists. So, I, of course, tell people what they need to do and how they need to do it. So, but. You not knowing is equally not an excuse because I just remember the portable um, begging <laughs> people to say, <laughs> begging the FCC to say, please, I was not aware. Let this just slide. But then there won't be begging again for anybody. Who knows who is next? The FCC is picking up. But then this is wrap it up for today on Outnumbered. I am Messi. Bye for now. <laughs>